Exodus, the ninth chapter, verse 27. I'm reading out of the King James uh, Version. It says, And Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron and said unto them, I have sinned this time. The Lord is righteous, and I and my people are wicked. And treat the Lord, for it is enough. That there be no more mighty thundering and hail, and I will let you go, and you shall stay no longer. And Moses said unto him, As soon as I am gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands unto the Lord, and the thunder shall cease, neither shall there be any more hail, that thou mayest know how that the earth is the Lord's. But as for thee and thy servants, I know that you will not yet fear the Lord God. Let us pray. Father, I just ask you, Lord Jesus, a blessing, Lord, on this word. Lord, your word is already blessed. Father, I ask you, Lord, to bless my mouth to bring your word, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, to use me, Lord, as a mouthpiece. Lord, I can do nothing on my own. I, I am incapable, Father, Lord. But if you will speak through me for a moment, Lord Jesus, that your people walk out of here strengthened, changed, and encouraged. God, that you get all glory today. And we just thank you, Lord, for your word in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. You can be seated. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What, what, is, what do you think about that? You know, here we are, we're reading. If you don't, you don't know where I'm reading from right here, I'm reading. Um, this is where the children of Israel is, uh, has been in Egypt. They're in bondage. The children of Israel have been there for a while, and they have a hard taskmaster. They are being enslaved, and they're God's people. Uh, God's people has a tendency over and over and over and over and over and over and over, all the way from their generation to ours. And we have a tendency to keep going back to the things that we came away from. We have a tendency to go back and do the things we know we shouldn't do, but yet we still do it. And what does God do every time that happens if we keep repeating that process? He allows us to go back and be slaved once again over and over and over. You can read it in the Bible over and over. We find that the children of Israel, they're in Egypt. They are finally coming to that point. Man, they have been growing and growing in numbers of who they are. Um, um, and, and the Egyptians literally are just making them build things, making the slaves out of them. They're building monuments. They're building uh, buildings. They're building all of this stuff uh, for these pharaohs. Well, we find where Moses is called. Y'all remember Moses? The Lord spoke to him in the burning bush out in the midst of the desert, told him he was going to go and he's going to be the deliverer of the people. Moses is kind of, mm, I don't know, Lord, you know, I don't talk real good. I got a stutter. You know, he, he come up with all these excuses. But out running down that rabbit trail, we're we, we going to move right on forward. And we find Moses, and he finally, in obedience, he took Aaron with him. And the Lord anointed him and gave him a staff to use and, and begin to show him how he's going to use him and, and how he can take that staff and turn it into a snake. And so we begin this journey as he goes down to Pharaoh. And he says, the Lord says, I'll... I want you to let my people go that we can go out and to worship him and that he's the God of heaven. And Pharaoh was like, you want me to just let all of these workers and all the work we're doing just stop because you come in here and said we should. And he's like, well, I got this stick, y'all. <laughs> I got this stick. And he threw it down on the ground, and it became a, a serpent. And Pharaoh kind of jumped back, but then his magicians threw their staffs down, and they become serpents. And Y'all remember the story of Moses' his staff his, was a snake. It eat the rest of them. And he reached down, picked it up, and it was a stick again. It was a staff again. But Pharaoh was not impressed. Sent him on his way. And that began a, a, a whole a series of problems, if you would, for the... Uh, for the Egyptians, we find, uh, you can look, you'll find ten plagues and things that begin to take place, uh, things that begin to happen. Uh, and and, and I, I keep looking at this and, and the things that's taking place, and uh, I believe it's the seventh plague where we started reading at. This is, the, this is on down the line a little bit as things are going on, things are progressing. Now, I want to tell you that it seems to me like as I watch, God does not start on 10 because of grace. Even in the Old Testament. 
Now, there's a whole lot of times where God seemed to have some instant judgments over things. He's, when he says, thou shalt not, he meant thou shalt don't. Don't do it. If you don't know what thou shalt not means, it's don't do it. And there's some instant judgments. We find when the, the young man touched the Ark of the Covenant, when they were, David was bringing it back and it was bobbling on the cart, and, and the Lord said that no one can touch it but the, the Levites, and when he was trying to do a good thing in disobedience and reached up to steady it, they wasn't supposed to have the, it on a cart anyway. They was doing it wrong, and then what happened when he touched it? God struck him dead, and everybody was like, what? And everybody upset with God because God did what he said he would do. We find ourselves in the same situations generation after generation, time after time. And humanity, we, we want God. We want the blessings of God. We want the, the usefulness of God. But sometimes we have a hard time with obedience. Sometimes we have this, this hard time uh, starting something and finishing something. Now, I don't know about you guys, but Sister Emma can tell you that I have a hard time sometimes around the house starting projects and finishing projects. I'm a real good starter. <laughs> She'll have some, yeah, Brother Tony, go, come on, Brother Tony, my brother from another mother. He, I, I see him hanging his head back here, Sister April, I'm looking at him. <laughs> you already know. I'm real good at starting projects. But I have a hard time sometimes getting things all the way completed. Not because I don't want to, just because I get distracted. I get busy. I have good intentions, but I don't always complete the task. Thank God for Brother Larry. <laughs> that helps me finish these great ideas that we have. So we find here where Moses goes in and he begins to like, listen, he comes back. He tells him, the Lord says, go out. He says, I want you to stretch the staff out over the water. Some of y'all remember the stories. And the water's going to turn to what? Blood. Everything in the water, it began to stink. Things, fish began to die. It was funky. Every water and every puddle and every stream and every, every vessel, everywhere except for God's people in Goshen, uh, the water turned to blood. Well, the magicians tried to do their thing. They tried to, you know, whatever. They throw a little dye in the water. It wasn't what God did. Did that change Pharaoh? Nope. Went from the, turn the water into blood to frogs. Y'all remember the story? I preached a message about these frogs not too long ago. Well, it's been a while now. About the frogs. Man, all of a sudden, frogs begin to come from everywhere. Frogs on top of frogs on top of frogs. Everywhere, but guess where? In Goshen. Everywhere where God's people was. Frogs in the houses, in their, in their kneading troughs, in their flour, in their, in their beds, and everywhere you go, people was miserable. Did that change Pharaoh? No. Moses went to him and said, he said, I want you to entreat the Lord to take these frogs. And he asked him, he said, when do you want it done? He said, tomorrow. It's a great message. Because a lot of times we should choose right now when we're miserable but we keep putting off what we should do. We put off the misery another day. We, we got it. We got it. You know, we got this. Keeps going. All the way down, thing after thing. Uh, lice begin to come. They had a plague of lice. Flies, a plague of lice. A disease on their livestock. Livestock begin to die. Things begin to happen. You could look. Uh, you could read each one of these. Uh, the, the plagues of the water turned into uh, to blood was in uh, Exodus 7, 14 through 25. The frogs come, uh, verses uh, 7, 25 uh, through 8. Uh, lice came uh, when it come through in Exodus 8 and 16. You could just see one after the other the, in order. The flies came and uh, then the disease of the livestock came. And then all of a sudden, number six, it gets worse. Boils begin to break out. on, And this didn't just happen with one person. This is from the king all the way down to the servants and their animals. Their little foo-foo dogs or whatever they had back then. I don't maybe probably cats. Everything broke out in boils. And it would get their attention for a little while. They would desire reprieve for a little while. They would make promises over and over every time. You'll see things get bad. Oh, entreat the Lord. I, I, I'm going to change. I'm going to do it. 
Oh, just ask the Lord to do it. I'm going to let them go. And as soon as they would get gone, he would change his mind and wouldn't let them go worship over and over and over. I want to minister to you on this thought today. Ain't you tired? Ain't you tired? Ain't you tired? I, if I could have asked Pharaoh, I believe somebody would have said, Pharaoh, ain't you tired? Every time you come up and you make a promise and you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, it gets worse. It started off just a, a, a stick on the ground turned into a serpent, eat up some of the other people's sticks. It went from there to the water turned a stinky mess. Just like some of our lives sometimes has such a stink to it. Death begins to come around everything. And we, we think, but seven days later, everything cleared up. See, that's what happens. We want to turn to God and everything seems to get a little bit better. And all of a sudden, what happens? We change our mind. Ain't you tired of the judgments of God getting worse and worse every time? Ain't you tired of things continually growing and getting worse? It went from the blood to the frogs. Well, that was a horrible thing. It was very inconvenient. Nobody liked all them frogs on them. But did it change everything? Only for a moment. Oh, he made, enough to make some promises. Enough to say, oh yeah, I'm going to let you go. I'm going I'm to obey the Lord. I'm going to let everything happen. And as soon as the frogs are gone, his mind would change. And the frogs are gone. It went from the frogs to the lice. Now, I don't know about y'all. I can handle some frogs. I'm going to tell y'all a true story. <laughs> Brother Joe can't handle the lice. My kids, when they was little, come home from school. Y'all met Christian around here not too long ago. They got lice from somebody at school. She had long hair. Didn't want to cut that beautiful long hair. But her mom painstakingly went through, did all the stuff you got to do. I slept in the truck, and I'm not, even, I'm not even ashamed to tell you, I did not sleep in the, car, in the house for a couple of days. I can't handle the lice. They had a plague of lice on everything that moved. Y'all think, Brother Joe, you're horrible. You slept in your truck. I did. I ain't going to kid you. I was in my 20s, my low, low 20s, or, or uh, high 20s. I was freaked out, man. I was scratching and itching and didn't have none. I mean, y'all ever, you know what I'm saying? That's like, I just couldn't even handle it in my mind. They had them everywhere. Every animal scratching and itching. You would think that would be, a, that would that would have done it for me, y'all. Uh-uh. There's certain things that will happen in some of y'all's lives and you've come a long ways, but you still keep going back and you keep, and every time things get a little bit worse, it, it, frogs were very inconvenient, but lice begin to affect you. Lice begin to cause an itching in you and a discomfort in you and an unsettling in you and everything around you. But what do we keep doing? Every, well, if you, Lord, if you'll just get rid of them, I'll, I promise, I promise. Ain't you tired? When are we going to stand upon the promises and the commitments we're making to God? When are we going to stand upon what God is calling us to do? When are we going to get to the point to where we get so tired and sick and tired of being sick and tired? And then all of a sudden the livestock, some of them begin to die. A disease come out. All of them then die. Do you know every time there was death, you know what happens when you live in a desert and you've got a bunch of animals that are dead? It stinks. When all those frogs, the billions of frogs, the Bible said that it stank in the land. The blood, it stank when it was in the waters. And the fish come to the tops and they died and it stank. Because sin brings forth a stench and death. Again, another promise. Again, another betrayal. And the sixth plague was boils on their body. Now, it's bad to have the frogs crawling all everywhere. It was horrible to have the lice itching and a scratching. Now, I don't know about any of y'all. I've had a bull get like one. I can't imagine all over my everything. I can't imagine it being in that kind of situation. Everything had boils. See, the further you go, 
the more it's going to affect you personally. The further you go, the more it's going to reach into you, into your life. Not just the thing. It's going to get more into your body, into your physical. They begin to get bold. And for a moment, I'll do it. I promise. Just entreat the Ask God. Ask God. How many times are you going to ask God? How many times are you going to say, God, I promise? God, I'm going to do what you ask. I'm going to, I'm going to, they, for them, he said, the Lord wanted to let them to go worship him and to leave. How many times have we said, God, I promise if you'll do this, I, God, I promise. And, and we, we want to hinge all these things. And then when a few days of peace and respite come by, we forget our commitment. We forget how, how far we've come from. We forget. And then another thing comes. Ain't you tired? Ain't you tired of having to go through these battles? Ain't you tired of having to lie and cover up lie and, and cover up excuse? Ain't we tired of living these things? But then we come to the scripture where we started, number seven, the hail. And I noticed something about this verse was different. It said, in Pharaoh sit. Now this is when the, the hail, the thunder, and the light, when Pharaoh sent and called Moses and Aaron and said unto them, I have sinned this time. I'm reading right out of the King James Version. This ain't no new interpretation. I've sinned this time. See, if you begin to read and you look and see what happened, there was a hailstorm that come. And this hailstorm come was lightning. And, and the, the Bible said that if you read back and you read the description, it said that there was a fire rolling across the land. And then the hail began to kill not just some of the animals. But Brother Jim, it began to, it began to affect all of the green stuff, all of the trees, all of the crops, all of the food. And I can promise you he knew what it was like to have a famine in that land. Because Egypt went through one of the most tremendous famines there ever was. The reason the children of Israel ended up being there. Because the Lord revealed through a dream and used one of God's people to interpret the dream. And told him that there would be seven years of plenty then seven years of famine. God told him to, for the seven years of plenty to store up and get ready for the seven years of famine. And the, the Pharaoh listened and, and put God's person, uh, Joseph, in charge. And when the famine of the land came, they were prepared for it. But this particular Pharaoh knows about a famine. And when all of a sudden, when it began to affect all of these things, he said, oh, I've sinned. Back up and look. He ain't said nothing about I've sinned. He hadn't come into any point of saying anything. He'd been lying over and over to himself and to God. But there comes a point to where things begin to touch you, where you live in a place that's going to hit you in certain ways, that when God gets your attention, you're going to know it. There's certain things you're going to hear and you're going to know it. I have sinned this time. Then he goes as far as to say, the Lord is righteous. This is Pharaoh saying this. What's so different about this time? And I and my people are wicked. For the first time, we find him starting to self-examine and look at himself. For the first time, we find him. Some, something had to get so bad in his life. The frogs wasn't enough to do it. It would have been enough for some people. The lice wasn't enough to do it, would have been enough for me. Lord, for some of us, the very first plague would have been all we needed. We would straighten right up. For some of us, if we've been going time after time after time after time, and God keeps sending warning after warning. I gave a warning in this church not too long ago. God spoke to me, and I gave a warning that if there was some change to not take place, that God was going to set your fields on fire. And I can promise you, uh, there are some folks in here, their fields have been ablaze. There's some folks that's not even standing in this church right now. They're no longer here because they refuse to hear the word of God and make the changes in their life. And I'm saddened in my heart. But when God gives a warning, there's certain things that will hit you. And what's it going to take? Ain't you tired of having to go through the judgments of God? Ain't you tired of uh, continually lying to the spirit of God, lying to yourself, lying and keeping up with lies? Hallelujah. I have sinned this time. The Lord is righteous. 
and I and my people are wicked. He said, entreat the Lord. He said, ask the Lord. If you look, at, plead with the Lord. For it is enough that there be no more mighty thunderings in hell. And I will let you go. And yes, and you shall stay no longer. You know what he, he said? I, 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 this is enough. I'm, I, this, is, this, is, this is more than I signed up for. And Moses says, okay, I'm going to go. And when I get out beyond the city, when I raise out my hands, all of this thing that you're so afraid of, see what was happening was he was seeing everything around him, all the crops, everything green, quickly dying out. He could see the writing on the wall of what was coming. It was famine was coming. And famine causes the most horrific. Famine in those days caused people to eat each other's children. Caused them to, to start eating people. Caused them to, we read the stories of Samaria when they were surrounded by an enemy. They began to eat this stuff out of the bottom of a bird's cage. They begin to eat. and do, Famine causes horrific things. There's things in your life that you see the writing on the wall of what's to come. And you better listen to the words of God. You better listen to the warnings of God. You better hear. Ain't you tired of going through enough? Ain't you ready to have the rejoicing of God? And sure enough, Moses goes out. And he stretches his arms out, and the fear is gone. Everything stops. And you know what happens again? Should have been enough, Brother Brad. He knew his own situation. He knew he was a sinner. He knew him and his people. They were, he knew that God was righteous. He knew the judgments that was falling was righteous. But still one more time, he refused to let him go. His heart was hardened. All I can say is, Pharaoh, ain't you tired? My goodness, man. How bad's it got to be? All I can say to you today is, ain't you tired? We live in a time right now, uh, and I'm just going to be plain. Uh, you know, people go to jail. It ain't no big deal to go to jail no more. It just ain't. Uh, you, you think it is, but people keep going and going and going and going and going. If it's, a, if it's such a, uh, when, when it comes to the point to where you fear it and you don't want to go, you won't do nothing. You won't even, you won't drive too fast. You'll be afraid of getting, you won't do nothing to cross that line. But we quit fearing. We're in a world we're not afraid. We're in a world where people, I can deal with whatever, you know, whatever comes my way. We get into that self-worship, what we want, what makes us happy, what I want today. And we feel we'll come, we'll, we need, we, man, when things get so bad, we need the reprieve of God. We want God to make the thunderings and the lightnings and the fire and everything that's happening around us. We want the destruction that we see coming to stop. And we run to an altar and we, we cry out to God. And we say, God, I promise I, I'm, I'm going to do what you asked for. I'm going to do everything. And then as soon as things get cleared up, we go right back to the same nonsense. We trade one problem for another. We go right back into the same sins. He knew he was a sinner. And he said, I'll just be a sinner. And the hail come. And then the next one, eight, was locusts. The eighth plague. Exodus 10 and 16. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste. Notice again what's taking place. This is the locusts. And what do locusts do? They eat everything that the hail didn't destroy. The things that are left in your life that are still good... Let me tell you something. You better heed the warnings of God. The devil didn't send the lo locusts. The devil didn't send the lice. The devil didn't do anything. God sent it. God sent it. Oh, that, nobody likes that. We serve a good God. He's a merciful God. He wouldn't do that. You ain't been reading your Bible. God sent the boils. Can I just get real plain? God put some of y'all in jail. God put some of the problems in your life. God caused some of the things to happen because you refuse and you're so stinking hard-headed. You won't listen to God. I'm preaching to me. I promise you. I fought some of these same battles. I still go through this, some of the same things. I ain't perfect. I, I guarantee you I ain't perfect. I still struggle with my temper. It's been a long time since I took a drink. been a long lot of years since I had any drugs. 
But I promise you this, there's more things to deal with than just getting high. And the locusts come. Verse 16, then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste. In haste. He didn't wait. And he said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Oh, now he's going to, that's you, preacher. Now, therefore, forgive. Now, I'm reading again out of the King James. I'm not reading another interpretation. Now, therefore, forgive, I pray thee, my sin only this once, and entreat the Lord your God that he may take away from us, from me, this death only. Because he already knew what a famine was like. They knew what happens. It's nothing but death. There's certain things if you will continue to push and to push and to push and to go back and to go back and to go back and continue as God's blessings come and you say, Lord, help me, and he helps you, and you go back and you say, Lord, help me, and he helps you, and you go back. There's only so far that things begin to get worse and worse and worse. And ain't you tired of the worse? Ain't you tired of the judgment of God? How bad's it got to get? When he began to see again the locusts, it's taken everything that will fill their belly. The locust took everything that the hell didn't destroy. And with haste, he went running as quick as he could, hoping that the locust would leave something. Nothing will make a person pray like a good old-fashioned emergency. They're going to take this away. I'm going to lose my car. I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to lose my kids. I'm going to lose my husband. I'm going to lose my boyfriend. I'm going to lose this. I'm going to lose that. All of a sudden, things start falling. I'm going to lose my freedom. I'm going to lose my health. Something all of a sudden hit me. Lord, I I can't breathe. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't work. All of a sudden, things begin to hit your body, begin to hit all of these things. It ain't always the devil causing these problems. Sometimes when you are the cold according to God's purpose, he will bring hellfire and brimstone. He will set your woods on fire. He'll set your fields on fire. He'll send the locusts. He'll send the fire. He'll send the thunder. And you will sit there in fear and you will begin to watch everything crumble around you. But ain't you tired? Ain't you tired? That he may take away from me this death. And he went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And he said, and the Lord turned a mighty strong west wind, which took away the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust in all the coast of Egypt. And then come darkness. Because once again, he didn't, he didn't follow. See, sometimes we feel like that we've done lost enough, nothing else matters. But oh, it does. Sometimes we feel like we have suffered so much loss in our life, nothing else can be any worse than this, this, or this. So why even bother? I promise you, honey, it can get worse. All the food's gone. All the hope. The lice. The frogs. The hell. The locusts. The ninth plague was a thick darkness covered Egypt. And I don't mean just got a little dark. They couldn't even find each other. It was so dark. They couldn't see each other. It was like blindness went over everyone. It went dark. Everywhere but guess where? In Goshen, where God's people was. Are y'all seeing a pattern? You want the protective hedge of God? Stay amongst God's people. Stay in the midst of God's will. Stay where God's plan is. Stay in the place where God's hedge of safety is. Don't continue to run out and go back to the same old things. Continue to hear God's voice. 
do the same thing over and over. Y'all already know, we've all heard the definition of insanity is to continue to do the same thing over and over. I don't care if you got a different twist. I don't care if you got another way you're doing it. Maybe you think you got a workaround. You can get away with it. Ain't no workaround, honey. You can't fool God. God knows everything. Hallelujah. He ain't no punk. The devil's a punk. God knows the intent of your heart. He knows every deception. We're even. Sometimes we are deceived ourselves. The Bible even talks about a spirit of delusion. And when the delusion comes, sometimes we give up hope. Sometimes we don't realize that we are just one obedient step away from walking into the blessings of God. But when we continue to dance with the devil, when we continue to allow the enemy to come in and deceive us and to lie to us, and we begin to accept his, his things that, that we think, oh, this is fun, this is it's okay, this is this, this is that. Quit dancing with the devil. What's it going to take? Are you tired yet? Pharaoh, are you, are you in the darkness? Are you in the hole? Are you in the place where you can't see? You don't know which way to turn. You don't know what's up. You don't know what's down. Three days in complete darkness. Sometimes we find ourselves sitting in a position and in a place to where you don't know where to go, what to do. You're in this place of solitude. It gives you a chance to think. But Pharaoh, once again, followed his heart, and his heart was hard. You know why our hearts get hard so much is because we've been through so many things. Sometimes some of y'all, your heart is hard because you've endured so much hardship in your life. From the time you were young, someone done something they shouldn't have done to you, with you, had you do something you shouldn't do. We carry burdens. We carry aches and pains and hurts. we got things that you've never told nobody about. We've got holes on the inside that hurts when the wind blows that nobody understands what's wrong with you. They don't understand the rage. They don't understand the self-mutilation. They don't understand why we keep going back and keep going back, even when we see the goodness of God in front of us. And if we would ever just trust in Him and know that He is a healer, and know that if we were faithful to him and trust him, that he will change everything. In the tenth plague, y'all know what happened. The death angel come over. And this was it. This was the final straw. I don't want to see anybody get to their final straw. Don't, don't make God push you to ten. Don't make God put you, don't, make, don't let things get so bad. Can I just encourage, the death angel come over and the, the firstborn was dead of, of Pharaoh and every, not just everybody in all of Egypt, even the firstborn sons of, of every animal. See, there is a ripple effect of our decisions and choices that affect sometimes people that have no decision and choice. Pharaoh's decision and choices affected everyone in his family, everyone in his land. Our decision and choices affect so many people beyond that don't have a choice. And it's up to us to stand and trust in God and trust in his process and realize, Lord, I'm starting to see this thing now. I've been my own worst enemy. Lord, I've been following a spirit of delusion. And when I should have realized you're trying to help me, you're sending warning after warning. And I thought the devil was trying to get me, Lord, but... How far do y'all think God will go to get his will? How far will God go to have his people restored? You know how far he went? He sent his only begotten son to be crucified and nailed upon a cross. Don't think he won't turn your life upside down and set everything on fire trying to save you and your children and your family. If he's willing to sacrifice his own son... What did he ask Abraham to do? He said, Abraham, I want you to take Isaac, your son, your only son, and I want you to put him on an altar, and I want you to sacrifice him unto me to prove who your dedication is to. And what did he do? He took that son, his only son, and he took the knife up ready to kill him. And the Lord stopped him and said, now I see where your heart is. 
God is waiting to see where some of your hearts are. Quit turning back. Quit going back. He's got great things ahead of you. He wants to pour out blessings on you. He wants to repair what you did not think could be repaired. There's things in your life that you think is over right now. Give it a few years, honey. God will restore what the locusts have eaten. It takes a while for seeds to grow. It takes a while for things to change change in your life. Give it some time. There's people in your life that you think is gone. Let me just remind you, they'll hunt you down later. They may be gone today, but they will hunt you down. And they will love you. Follow God. Give them somebody worthy of love. Give them somebody worthy of love. There's people in our lives. We've got bridges we've burned. We've had things happen in our life. We think relationships can never be restored. Give it some time. If the Lord can send all of these crazy plagues into your life, just trying to stop you, trying to get your attention, trying to rescue you, he was willing to send Jesus to die for you, He wants to restore everything. What happened to Job? He lost his children. He lost everything. But he stayed faithful. And what did God do? He restored to him. He restored all of his tenfold. Richer than any other man. God is a restorer. You may have some problems. You may have some things in your life. Things that you think cannot ever be fixed. And God says, trust me. Lean upon me. He loves you. Jesus willingly went to the cross for you. That not just for the, you to be saved and run around uh, heaven and going, hallelujah, hallelujah. So that you could have peace in this life. So you can have happiness in this life. So you could be used by God to win souls. Because some of you have the greatest talent inside of you for winning souls. But the devil has been using you to drag people down for years. Let God use you. Let's don't go to a tent. Ain't you tired? Are you tired yet? Do you want God's restoration today? Because today is the day. Come on, stand. Today is the day for change. Today is the day for healing. Today is the day for restoration. Today is the day to stop going back on your promises. Today is the day to be restored and and not be the liar that we have become so many times. Today is the day to get it right and get it real. You don't have to, to tell me anything God already knows. It ain't about me. It's about Him and it's about you. Can I just go on and tell you? Say, preacher, you're always preaching this stuff. It gets me. I ain't making this stuff up. It's what God gives me. Look in that book right there. I'll show it to you. Not one note in there. The only thing I have is a list of the ten plagues. The Spirit of God pours out week after week here. And when the Word of God hits you, the reason it's hitting you is because God loves you. God wants to restore you. He wants to heal you. Today is the day of change. Today is the day of your salvation. Can I encourage you today to give it all to Him? I know we have every week. I I encourage you to come down and pray in the altar. I know that it it can very easily become repetitious. But can I encourage you today, let this be the real one. Don't let this be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, waiting on ten. Let today be the last time that you have to pray the same prayer over. Let it be the last time you have to go out and, and know that you're going to be a liar to the things. Trust God and say, Lord, I give everything to you. Lord, I I am a sinner. I know that I've sinned. I know I have wronged you. I know I have done these things. And I want you to pull off the the heat off of me, Lord. I I want these things, these plagues, these things that's been following me around. I want them to stop, Lord. But, Lord, when they stop, I'm not going to stop worshiping you. When they stop, I'm not going to go back on my word. I'm going to be truthful. Lord, I'm not going to go back. So what are you saying? I'm going to quit going and getting high. I'm going to quit going and getting drunk. I'm going to quit drinking. I'm going to quit smoking. I'm going to quit taking the pills. I'm going to quit going down to the vape shop and sucking all this stuff into my lungs. I'm going to quit trying to be something that God didn't intend me to be. And I'm going to be high on Jesus. 
I'm going to enjoy the life that God has given me because I don't have to self-medicate myself any longer because I'm trusting in Jesus. I'm going to quit lying. I'm going to quit backbiting. I'm going to quit being a hypocrite. I'm going to quit being mean to people. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to do what the Father wants me to do. I'm going to be a soul winner. I'm going to be what Jesus wants me to be. Lord, please help me to stop going and doing the things that I used to do, but let me look like you. Let me act like you. Let me sound like you. Let me be a soul winner and not a hypocrite so that the plagues will quit burning through my life and that I could be used by you. Father, I thank you today for all that you have done in this service. I've been obedient to you today, Lord, and I've read your word and I've given you what you have given me. And I ask you, Father, today to touch every heart. I ask you, Jesus, Lord, every, everyone that's heard this word, Lord Jesus, I know this is for those that are hearing today. God, let the word burn inside today. Let us get a reality of who we are and where we are and what you are doing in our life to try to reach us. And let us receive change today, God. Let us receive your mercy and your grace. And let us not keep going back, Lord, but we go forward and trusting in you. Father, I just ask you, Lord, to restore Lord, what the enemy has tried to steal. I ask you to send peace, Lord, where the enemy has tried to bring destruction. Lord, I ask you, God, to restore, Lord Jesus, and let us to see, God, what you are doing and all of your goodness. And I ask you, Father, Lord, today, let us forgive ourselves because we know you will forgive us. In your name, Jesus. Again, I have prayed with you. I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray today. You have a choice. I'm going to run on for Jesus. You have a choice. Are you going to keep going back and doing the same old things? Or is today going to be the day of change? Is today going to be the day that you walk out of Egypt and you walk in God's anointing? This altar is open. Would you come? Hallelujah. Hey, this is Pastor Joe from Church Restored. I pray today's message has blessed you. We would love to invite you to come out and be a part of our service. Each Sunday, we start at 11 a.m., uh, Wednesdays, we start at 7 p.m. Uh, we are looking forward to meeting you and just can't wait to see you. Come on out. Uh, our church is a church where the saints have a past and the sinners have a future. We've all uh, done things that we are uh, not necessarily proud of in our life, but thank God for grace and mercy. Uh, that same grace and mercy that was given to me is given to each and every one. So come as you are. Come join us. We look forward to meeting you. God bless you and see you soon.